Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. That I want to start with a question. Do you struggle with post-boundary setting guilt? Do you finally find the courage to say the thing you need to say or make the request or set a limit, and then you torture yourself for days, hours, weeks after the fact? Well, my friend, this episode is for you because that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about is how we can more deeply understand post-boundary setting guilt. But then what can we do about it? Because a lot of times that guilt is the thing that will make you want to take the boundary back or the boundary request back, which you don't want to do. Because if you've already made the request, obviously it's something that you want. So before we get into it, if you happen to be new to my YouTube channel, say hello, introduce yourself. We are a very friendly group. Make sure that you subscribe and that you hit the bell icon so that you don't miss anything. We roll out new episodes every Tuesday. And every Thursday, every Tuesday, it's me doing a solo episode. Every Thursday, it's me interviewing an expert in a field, someone whose work that I respect or someone that you guys have told me that you would like me to interview. So I do that on Thursdays. So if you hit the bell icon, you will get a reminder and a little notification every time something new rolls out and I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. Shall we move it into today's content? I think we shall. All right. So with boundaries, right? We all need them. It's important that we all have them, right? Let's just establish what they are, what I say they are. My definition is I want you to think about boundaries as your own personal rules of engagement. It lets other people know what's okay with you and what's not okay with you. Your boundaries are made up of your preferences, your desires, your limits, and your deal breakers. Preferences, desires, limits, and deal breakers. So it's important that we're all sort of on the same page as to what this means. So what happens when we have disordered boundaries? Well, it means sometimes that we let people treat us any way that they want to treat us. If you're like a house without a front door, it's just an opening, and anyone can come in and come out and take your stuff and do whatever they want, that's having boundaries that are too porous. And you may go the other way. Because disordered boundaries are not just porous boundaries. They're also rigid boundaries. So if you're someone who is very much like my way or the highway, if you're someone who, if somebody pisses you off or hurts your feelings, you're more likely to cut them out of your life completely than you are to tell them that they hurt your feelings. That's having more of a rigid, disordered boundary style. Either way, we need boundaries in our life. And we need to get better at communicating our boundary requests to others. That's so much of the work that I do, so much of what is in Boundary Boss. And hey, so much of what is in the new Boundary Boss workbook, which is coming out right now, like literally right now. The Boundary Boss workbook comes out on October 31st. It's amazing. You guys are going to love it. You can go to BoundaryBossWorkbook.com and you can still get the bonuses that we offered. So you definitely want to go do that right now. I'll wait. BoundaryBossWorkbook.com. Okay, so thank you for ordering the book. I appreciate that. You're going to love it. Now, moving into what gets in the way of us creating boundaries, one thing is boundary guilt, which is what the focus of this episode is on, is how many of you tell me I want to set a boundary, but when I do, I feel horribly guilty about it after the fact. So what I want you to think about, we're going to break it down. And in the guide that goes along with this episode, don't worry, there'll be questions and stuff for you. You can get that at terrycole.com forward slash guide. We're going to get really dialed into what are we actually feeling? Because I think a lot of times we misname our feelings and you may feel guilt. You may believe that drawing boundaries or making a boundary request is selfish or wrong, and that would inspire guilt, but that may not be it. I want you to think about when you say, I feel guilty for setting a boundary, are you really afraid? Is it fear? or anxiety presenting as guilt. So think about that, because a lot of times, certainly in my younger life, I would mix the two up. 
where I would think it was guilt I was feeling, but it was really fear. I didn't want someone being mad at me. I didn't want to be rejected by anyone. You know, there was all of all of the reasons why we don't draw boundaries. And especially if you identify as a highly sensitive person, an HSP, or an empath, right? Because we deeply feel other people's feelings. And so when we disappoint other people, it's a different experience. If you're not an empath, and I'm not saying, you know, you, you still may not like disappointing people, sure. But when you're an empath, it hits different. It feels different. Because we're really feeling that other person's feelings when you're an empath. So it can be really terrifying to set a boundary and potentially disappoint someone, especially as an HSP. And I think that a lot of times we self-abandon or self-sabotage because we just don't want to deal with it. We want good relationships. A lot of times why we will self-abandon, meaning do something that you want us to do, even though that's not what we want to do or not what we think is best for us to do. A lot of times we will do that because our highest goal is to have good relationships. But here's the thing. You cannot self-abandon your way to a healthy relationship, right? That's not how it works. Because as we self-abandon, we are building up resentment for ourselves, for the other person. Part of the skills we need to grow in order to have less post-boundary setting guilt or fear or anxiety is we really have to self-reflect on why we're feeling the way that we are but also, we have to self-reflect on how our relationship is with ourself. Because if we're always sort of the last on our own list, or if we're always the first to be abandoned, so to speak, because we're trying to please others, that does not set you up to have a very good relationship with yourself. You have to think about it from the perspective of if you're a people pleaser, if you are a high-functioning codependent who has spent years, let's just say, over-functioning or saying yes to all the people, saying no now could bring on feelings of guilt and feelings of fear, right? You might feel bad or selfish for saying no, but I think that a big part of shifting this dynamic within yourself, because really this is an inside job, right? What you're experiencing, when you draw a boundary with someone, and then you're like having a guilt parade by yourself. That is an inside job, right? That other person, if you don't say anything to them, they don't even know what's happening for you. You have to question that guilt. Is it really wrong for you to prioritize what you need to do in that moment? Is it really wrong? And I think we really have to know, what do I need to do to be healthy in my life, right? What do I actually need to do? Really, how do I take care of myself? You know, when I think about how I was in my 20s, right, I felt obligated to people. I felt loyal to people who I barely knew sometimes. Like, you know, this is my own stuff that I worked out in therapy. Like, why would that be? Why would I feel obligated to help virtual strangers? You guys will hear different unbelievable stories of me and virtual strangers in my next book, on high-functioning codependency called Too Much, which won't be out until the end of 24. But that was something that I had a lot of guilt, but so, so misplaced. Just as that loyalty or that obligation was misplaced, I would feel as obligated to someone I barely knew as to the high-priority people in my life. So feeling guilty or feeling obligated and feeling guilty after the fact of drawing a boundary is something we really have to look at and go, huh, is it because I think it's wrong, what I'm doing? And that's really where we're going to get the answers that we need. Because listen, sometimes we can make a mistake. Sometimes you could mistake a demand or something that's kind of manipulative for a boundary. And they're not the same thing. So this is why being fluent in the language of boundaries is so important. Because when you're not, people a lot of times 
who'll talk to me about boundaries. And I'll say, that's not a boundary, though. What you're talking about right now is a demand, not a boundary. So part of where we really want to make the distinction is that boundaries are limits or rules we set for people to interact with us, right? But they're for us. So people can choose to, yes, interact with us that way, or or no, may, maybe they don't. Maybe they say, I don't accept your boundaries. And then you have to decide what that means to you. So the reason why, when I was writing Boundary Boss, the way that I wrote it and described boundaries as preferences, desires, limits, and deal breakers is because not all boundary requests are the same, meaning they don't all carry the same weight or the same importance. I think one of the most important things that you can do to combat post-boundary setting guilt is to be dialed back into your intention. Why are you setting this boundary and why now? So much of the time it's to protect ourselves or to protect our relationships. So when you get really clear that your heart is in the right place, that you're not doing anything to be mean, that you're not doing it to be mean to someone else, but that you have to prioritize the way that you feel, that can be really, really helpful. Because for many of us, guilt is a default emotion, right? It, it's just one where you automatically feel guilt, whether you have a reason to feel guilty or not. It's appropriate to feel guilt if you've done something wrong. Why? Because that will inspire us to take a reparative action. So there's nothing wrong with guilt, but this isn't that kind of guilt. When we have excessive guilt, around setting boundaries. It's about something else, right? It's about something else. And it's about, I think, a lot of us are overgivers. A lot of us are high-functioning codependents. A lot of us are giving all the time. And so putting a line in the sand or setting a limit can really feel like we're being selfish. And yet you're actually not. So I wonder, and I want to hear from you guys, what are your biggest struggles with post-boundary setting guilt? And I'll give you some other ideas in the guide. Just go to terrycole.com forward slash guide. Also, remember, the Boundary Boss Workbook is out right now. We've got amazing bonuses. You do not want to miss these. So go to boundarybossworkbook.com. And you can sign up for your bonuses there. You know, we've got a whole bunch of events that have been happening. So if you've been on this trip with me, thank you. And if you're just joining this trip, welcome. I hope you guys have the most amazing week. And as always, take care of you. Thank you so much for all your comments and all your questions. I love them all. You know, I read them all and I love to highlight them. So this is from Jackie Nahil. And this is under the episode top five boundary setting blocks and how to overcome them. And Jackie says, this is so amazing. Thank you so much. I'm not sure you know how helpful your videos are to people, but I just have to say, I have only watched a few of them and I feel like I'm in the room with you. I really appreciate your warmth and approach taking on these issues. It really makes a difference. Well, Jackie, thanks. And you know what is funny? I feel like I'm in the room with you guys too. And that is what makes me continue to do what I do. Because really, you are my, you're my North Star. You're my shining light. You guys are the reason I do it all. Because I could be doing other things in life, but really, I'm so lit up about your evolution that that's why I do what I do. So Jackie, thank you for taking the time to write a comment, because I know other people come and read comments, and that impacts how they feel or what they check out. A lot of times you'll share, like this episode, maybe someone didn't watch that episode, you know? So thank you. I really appreciate it. 